Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video looks at some waterproofing tricks you can do to better protect your electric bike from moisture ingress. Some of the content here is aimed at people using our upgrade kits, but many of the principles you can apply elsewhere, especially when it comes to things like battery connectors. The main principle is to use multiple layers of protection, so when they're combined together, they kind of reinforce each other to keep out moisture. The most important and basic one is just to keep book water away. So if you ride in the wet and mud a lot and commute in the rain, good mud guards are a good first layer to keep as much water as possible from spraying onto the electrical components and wiring. The less bulk water, the less moisture there will be to cause a problem. Some bikes it's easier to do that than with others. Like on this fat bike here, I do have some clip on ones, but they're not as effective as a full fender and I've not been able to locate a full fender that will really work with this frame and the 4.6 inch tires. If you can use a full fender, I would for very wet areas, but something's better than nothing. The next thing to look at is creating drip edges with the wiring. What I've seen happen quite often is moisture gets onto the wiring and then runs down wires and gets into the connectors. If it's something like the JST connector on a controller, it can short out the low voltage feeds, corrode pins. If it's a battery connector, it can short out the battery. This one here is an XT90 connector that had moisture get inside and you can see the discoloration around the pins. When you arrange your cables, wherever it's possible, create a low point or a drip edge so that any moisture that accumulates will naturally run away from the connectors and drip to the ground. It's not always possible to do that. You can see with my connector here for the phase wiring, it's going to be very difficult to put on a drip edge. You also need to account for moisture being driven by the air as you ride along. So you can use a tube of automotive grade silicone to seal around the gaps in the plugs. If you look at these XT90s, this QS connector, and even these Anderson connectors, you can see there's a gap around where the wire goes. All you need to do is fill the gap in with silicone. Even if they do get some moisture running down the cables then, it's not gonna be able to track inside. If you use a silicone with a fine nozzle like this, it's much easier to get the stuff in without making a big mess. You can see with just a small amount of silicone, you can seal up the back of these. If your connectors are nicely tucked away inside a battery bag, you probably don't need to worry about this so much, but if your connectors are on the outside, then it can't hurt and it could prevent a short. You can do some really neat tricks with heat shrink like this one, but I would still use the silicone in the ends. It does a really good job and heat shrink doesn't make a complete seal. Moisture still has the potential to get in and you can see that with the gaps here at each end. I'm using a bit of silicone on this phase wire connector. There's not much room around the wires, but I didn't want to take the chance of having moisture driven in here while I'm riding and shorting the phases. A further trick you can use is dielectric grease and you can put a smear around the outside of the connectors so when you push them together, it makes a nice seal. If you're enjoying this video and like what we're doing here, please consider liking it and subscribing. It really does help to grow the channel and it would be massively appreciated. Thank you. For the next part, we're going to have a little look at BBSHD and kit specific stuff. This more applies to modified motors using external controllers, but there are some tips here that can be applied to pretty much any DIY build. This is the cover to fill in where the stock BBSHD controller goes. There is a gasket and there's also a gasket here for the wires, but there are a few more steps that you can take to give yourself a bit of extra protection if you're concerned. These are optional ones, but they might be worth it if you're in a really wet area like, I don't know, Vancouver, Wales, Scotland, maybe Jamaica in the rainy season. The first area is if you've had the motor apart for a service or to fit a peak gear, you'll have had to have removed the silicone to get the phase wires through, so you can replace that. All you need to do is get enough silicone to go around where the wires go. You can also use silicone around where the hall centers plug in, because in my case, I damaged the factory seal that goes in there. And it's pretty easy to do that um, when you remove the silicone that they've put over at the top of it to get at the plug in the first place. You can also put silicone around the back of the pedal assist plug. And you can also then use some dielectric grease inside where you make the phase connections. I've sealed up the back of the phase wires here with another bit of silicone. You can also use dielectric grease around all these plugs when you put them together. What I like to do as well with the cover is seal up the gap where it meets the motor around the edges and this is because I ride in the snow and what I find is you tend to get snow build up in and around the motor and then it melts and there's naturally a little bit less compression on the inside of the gasket so I do like to take the extra precaution here to stop moisture sitting in this gap and then potentially working its way inside 
The way I do this is to run silicone around the inside of the motor case here. You don't have to go nuts and then you can slot the control cover over the top. It's best to get a nice fit with all the wires first. If you're just doing your install now, make sure everything's routed nicely before you do this part and maybe do a motor test as well. Make sure you're fully good to go first. So that's what I do with the motor to add extra layers of protection if you ride a lot where it's really wet, damp, humid and snowy. And you don't need to go this far if you're not being routinely subjecting it to those conditions. But I've ridden many winters commuting and done well with techniques like these. Let's have a look at the controller and the mount next. The ASI Back 855 is fully potted, but the biggest weakness is the JSD connector, which is why we spent a lot of time designing this mount and the plug to support it properly and prevent it flexing and also to seal up the back of the plug. When you put this plug in, make sure you use dielectric grease all around it. And again, drip edges are important to make sure that water runs away from the back area of the controller. There is potential, however, to get moisture in and around the edges of the mount, and we can improve that situation further by using some silicone again. You don't need to go nuts, but in a few key places, you can help keep moisture from getting into the back here for extra protection if you live in a very wet area. The first area is to put a smear in and around the front and down the side, so when you slot the controller in place, it seals up against the back 855. Once the controller is in place, you can then put a small bead of silicone along the edges. The final part is to use a small amount on the back of the controller in between where the cover screws in place. And again, you don't need to go crazy, you don't want it splurging out everywhere, just enough to make a seal. And then once it's all in position, you can remove any excess uh, if you don't like how it looks, but it should be possible to get a pretty clean look. If you want to go all the way, you can also seal up the back. And we've made this area where the wires come out as small as possible to allow for that. Personally, I don't, and I've not run into any issues with water ingress here, but it's also facing down in the right direction too. So anyway, that's it for my tips and tricks here. If you have any yourself you like to use in your builds, please post them in the comments. If you want to go further and submit ideas via Discord, then maybe we can do a future compilation of, of other tips and tricks for waterproofing. The next in this series is going to be setting up the Egg Rider V2, including activation and rider profiles to take advantage of some of the tuning options that you get with those. Anyways, huge thanks for watching and extra special thanks to all the channel members. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.